Hello everybody, I'm Toby Passman, and today we're going to take a look at the new 3-rail O-Gauge Chicago and Northwestern Steam Freight set from Lionel with Lion Chief. Now before we get to the details of this set, I'm going to mention a brief history on the real 242s. Now, for this, I'm going to let out this disclaimer. No 242 steam locomotives were built here in the United States for around U.S. rails. But there were some built in the United States to run in, in rails in, in different countries. The only countries that are known to have 242 steam locomotives were the Cape of Good Hope, Finland, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. Now, of those countries, the only country that had tender variations of the 242s was New Zealand. And there was the Class K class locomotive that were built by the Rogers Locomotive Works. These were the first American built locomotives that were used in New Zealand. And they were proved to be quite successful. Of those eight locomotives, only three of them have been preserved. Number K88 Washington was used on the first through train between. Christchurch Dunedin in 1877. After 50 years of service, Washington was dumped in the Oredi River, Southland, as a flood protection measure. In 1974, the locomotive was exhumed from her watery grave and over the next eight years was restored to full active condition. Sister locomotives numbered K92 and K94 have also been salvaged from the Oredi River. The K-92 has been restored to full active service and was re-established to has re-established her position on the Kingston Flyer Train, which was made famous by the K-Class at the end of the 19th century. Alright, now let's talk about Lionel's history on the 242. Lionel first introduced the 242 in the late 1920s when they released their standard gauge 390E. And in the 30s, they introduced it in O gauge with the 260E. But in the late 1930s and early 1940s, they introduced this particular style of 242, and it was called the 1684E. And it was used in many of their sets until 1942 when Lionel stopped making trains and had to make supplies for the Navy during World War II. But after World War II ended, Lionel went back to making trains and Lionel decided to use this particular type of engine in some of their sets, including all of their scout sets. And then some of their sets during the post-war era. One variation that's very well known is the 246. In fact, in the recent catalogs, Lionel has been put in the Scout set, and the locomotive is numbered 246X. But, I do have a couple of post-war 242s, one being numbered 1110, and another being numbered 2034. Alright, now let's talk about the history of the CNNW class R1. Now, free newcomers, for those of you wondering what 242 means, that refers to the wheel arrangement of the locomotive, meaning that there are two wheels up front, four driving wheels, and two trailing wheels. So this engine would be designated as a 242. Okay, now. The CNNW class R1 was actually a 460 type 10 wheeler. Now, and for those of you thinking, oh my goodness, why is CNNW 1155 cla classified as a 242 in this case? Well, I kind of wondered the same thing. I looked up CNNW 1155 on Google Images, and it showed up as a class R1 10 wheeler. And I was thinking to myself, why did Lionel do 1155 like this? Alright. <clears throat> now, there are some good news about the CNNW class R1. There are a few surviving examples of them. 
One being CNNW number 11, number 1385. That one's being preserved at the Mid-Continent Railway Museum in Wisconsin. And it was known to pull the, the Circus World Museum train in the mid to late 1980s. And another surviving example is number 175. And speaking of which, CNNW 175 is in the process of being restored at, as I speak by Steam Routing Institute, the same institute that owns Per Marquette Berkshire number 1225, which I'm very excited for. All right, now let's talk about this set, finally. Now, for those of you wondering, hey, why didn't Lionel catalog this set in their catalogs? Well, when I first saw this, I kind of wondered the same thing. I looked up the product number of this set on Linus website and it didn't show up, but but then I realized that this was an exclusive set for Menards. So Menards is where I picked this up. I live close to a Menards store, so that's where I picked up this set. So yeah, this was an exclusive set for Menards. Unless you're lucky enough to find one of these on eBay nowadays. Alright, as you can see, the set comes with five pieces here. A locomotive, a tender, a coal hopper, a boxcar, and a lighted caboose. And the locomotive here is equipped with Lion Chief control. Alright, now let's talk about the individual pieces of the set, starting with the engine and tender. The engine is driven by a precision can motor and it has the electronics package for Lion Chief control and it's also equipped with a basic type smoke unit and inside the tender is the electronics package for Rail Sounds RC. Alright, now we're going to take a closer look. Now keep in mind, basic is the key word here, so to some of you, think toy train, not model train. Anyway, on the fr on the pilot here, the details are pretty basic. You got a, except you got a nicely done brake hose here, which is a nice touch, and you got a nicely done cow catcher here. And I don't know if you can see it in the video very well, but you got a nicely done simulated coupler cut bar, which is a nice touch, and you got some nice detail up here. Moving up to the front of the boiler, you got some pretty cool details. You got rivet detail all along the edge of the front of the boiler. And you got nice step detail running along either side of the boiler. And you got some nice detail here around the smoke box. And right in the smack dab middle, you got an operating headlight and you got some nice number boards, which unfortunately are not lit. And you got some nice classification lights, except these are just green jewels, which are used to simul simulate marker lights, so you just have to use your imagination for that part. Moving down, you can see the wheels are really, really nicely done. You got the lead wheel, and you got the drive wheels, which look really cool when they're in action. And if you look closer, the drive wheels are modestly spoked. Although you got uh, the spokes are very recessed, as you can see. So, again, you'd have to use your imagination on that part. But as you can see, the drive gear looks really cool when the engine is in motion. And no, this engine is not broken, in case you're wondering. And the spoking is the same case with the trailing wheels, as you can see. And But above the wheels, you got nicely done air tanks right here. You got some nice valve gear detail up here, which is a nice touch. Moving further back, you got some really cool detail, including some nice cast-in piping detail right here. And you got rivet detail here on the firebox right here. And right here you got the bottom of the ash pan, which is cool. 
Now here's a look at the exterior of the cab. And you got some some rivet detail right here. And you got a nice crisp 1155 right here. And you got some rivet detail right here on the edges here. And you got a cast and grab iron up here above the cab windows. And speaking of cab windows, they're very nicely done, even though they don't have clear pl plastic inserts in them. But on the front of the cab, you can see there's no cab window. And I'm not sure why the, that's the case. Now looking down along the entire length of the boiler, you got details all over the place, if you look closely. You got some rivet detail right here. And you got a nice step right here. And you got casting handrail running the entire length of the boiler right along here. And you got the boiler bands. I don't know if you can see them, which look really nice. And you got some structure right here. And you got some detail right here, which is a nice touch. Moving further up. You got another step right here, which is a nice touch. And you got some rivet detail right here. And right here you got the simulated builder's plate, which Lionel's been using on their 242s since the post-war period. And right here you get, get a closer look at the cast-in handrail, which runs the entire length of the boiler. Right here is a look at the other side of the engine. As you can see, it looks the same. Although there's some minor differences. Alright, now we're going to look at the top of the engine. And as you can see, we got a nicely done smokestack. And there is a smoke unit down in there. And to load smoke fluid into the smoke unit, you simply pour the smoke fluid directly down the stack. And right here is a plate which, cover, which would cover the switch for the, for the E unit. The the 242s that Lionel had in the post-war period would have a switch right here for the E unit w determining whether the train should have the E unit activated or deactivated but but now that it's not needed it's got this piece covering that hole and on and on that piece you got some nice rivet detail which is a nice touch behind that we got a nicely done sand dome, which is a nice touch. And you got a nicely done brass bell, which is a separate piece. And behind that, you got the steam dome. And behind that, I don't know if you can see it well enough, but I'm pointing it out here. You got what looks like a dynamo generator. And I've always wondered why these engines don't have a, a separately applied whistle on these engines. But behind the the somewhat dynamo, you got a nice structure here. Actually, correction. Actually, this structure is actually part of the firebox of the engine. And behind that, you got a nice detail on the roof. And you got three roof vents, which unfortunately don't open. But keep in mind, Again, basic is the key word here. So you'd have to use your imagination with these roof vents. But other than that, you got some nice rivet detail on the top of the roof. Alright, now here's a look at the back of the engine. And as you can see, I've got the light on my iPod shining into the inside of the cab. So you can see the nicely detailed back head, which is a nice touch. You got nicely done firebox here, and you got nicely done details up here. And the first thing that caught my eye when I looked at this engine in, in the set's box is that there are hand-painted crew figures in the cab. And that, to me, was, was a really nice touch that Lionel added to these newer engines for their ready-to-run sets is the addition of crew figures, so... That adds some realism to it, in my opinion. And as you can see, they're very nicely done and hand-painted. And they're sitting on two very nicely detailed seats, which is a nice touch. And underneath the cab, you got the drawbar, which is 
which is typical for all Lion Chief and Lion Chief Plus engines. And if you're wondering what what these draw bars are all about, I recommend you watch Eric Siegel's review video of Lionel's Lion Chief Plus Mikado for that, because I don't want to get into all the details of the draw bars. Alright, here's a good look at the underside of the of the 242. And as you can see, it looks very typical with all 242s that Lionel has made since the post-war period. Except for a few differences. One is that you got the self-adjusting lead truck, which I think is a new feature that Lionel has added to their newer 242s. Seeing this made me wonder, my goodness, why didn't Lionel think of this in the post-war period? It's, it's similar with the self-adjusting drawbar of Lionel's O-Scale Milwaukee Road S3 Northern and their O-Scale Auto Rack cars with their self-adjusting couplers. But in this case, you got the self-adjusting lead truck. But as you can see, it looks really cool. And another old school feature is the style of motor that Lionel has used for this for these two four twos including the style of pickup rollers and also on this engine you got only one traction tire and before you ask yes Lionel did supply you with does supply you with a spare traction tire for the engine in case this one were to wear out for some reason now while I have the engine turned over, I want to show you these two switches here. These switches control the, the on-off switch for the sound and the on-off switch for the smoke unit. The switch here on the left is the, is the sound on-off switch, while the switch on the right here is the smoke unit on-off switch. That's according to the directions on page 13. Alright, that takes care of the engine. Now let's take a look at the tender in the set. Alright, as you can see, the tender is pretty basic for for O-Gauge sets, but, but as you can see, the, the tender here is actually of post-war origins, for those of you wondering. But anyway... Let's look at the details of this tender. As you can see, on the sides you got some nice rivet detail all over the place, which is a nice touch on the sides. And also on the sides you got a nice crisp Chicago Northwestern logo. On the front of the tender you can see there's quite a bit of detail, even though it's not much. But as you can see we got the doors for the coal bunker right here, which are nicely done. And you got some details surrounding them. Right here, down here, you got the receiving socket for the drawbar. And again, if you're curious about the drawbars of Lionel's Lion Chief and Lion Chief Plus steam engines, again, I'd recommend you watch Eric Siegel's review video of Lionel's Lion Chief Plus Mikado. Alright, here's a closer look at the truck side frames of the tender. These are also the truck side frames used on the on the pieces of rolling stock in the set. But anyway, you got simulated bearing caps and you got simulated springs right here which are really nicely done. The back of the tender in my opinion is the busiest part of the tender. Right here you got the cast in ladder which is a nice touch. And right here would be the reverse light, and these would be the marker lights. And you got a cast in grab iron here. And I don't know if you can see it very well, let me zoom it in. It says 2671W 6 on the tender here. And to me, that gives it some post war charm. to the tender but on either side 
you got nice step detail right here, which is a nice touch. And right here you got a you here you got the coupler. But unfortunately you gotta open it manually like this. Alright, here's a good look at the top of the tender. Right here you got the simulated coal load. And right here you got the water hatch. And you got the step detail leading up to the top of the coal bunker. And you got some nice details right here on the deck of the tender. On the underside of the tender here, there's not much to see. And as you can see, there are no pickup rollers. That's because the tender gets it, gets its power via the drawbar system right here, as mentioned earlier. So really, the only thing that should be shown here is the speaker for the Rail Sounds RC sound system right here. Alright, now we're going to take a look at the three pieces of rolling stock that come in the set, starting with the two-bay coal hopper. As you can see, the coal hopper here, like the tender, is of post-war origins. As you can see. But other than that, it's pretty modern you got the nice Chicago Northwestern logo right here and you got some nice legible car data all over the place which is nice and you got nicely detailed ribbing right here and you also and along with it you got rivet detail all over the place which is nice and you got some step detail right here on the on the corner here and you got a separately applied brake wheel right here. And on both ends of the hopper, you got operating couplers. And as you can see, the truck side frames are the same as the truck side frames on the tender, as, as I mentioned earlier. But on the underside of the hopper here, as you can see, it's pretty basic, although you can see there's some rivet detail. Alright, now we're going to take a look at the box car that's in the set. As you can see again, the truck side frames are, are the same as on the hopper and on the tender of the engine. And you got some nice legible car data all over the place, like on the hopper. And right here you got root of the 400 streamliners, which is a nice touch. And right here is legible car data right here, which is a nice touch. And there's a lot of cast-in detail all over the place, like the cast-in ladders right here. And you got opening doors here, right here, on both sides. Now, when you close them, they're locked in place. You heard that snap? That means it's locked in place. Now one thing I just noticed about this box car is that on one end you got the the Lionel logo right here which is a really nice touch and you and also in this shot you get to see there's some nice rivet detail right below that. All right, here is a look at the at the top of the box car. And you can see the walkway is really nicely done. And you got nice roof detail which is a cool touch. Yeah, here is a look at the underside of the box car. As you can see, it's it's all cast in details, as you can see, which is a but it looks really nice nonetheless. And before I forget, here is a look at the underside of the hopper. As you can see, it's it too is basic, but you got rivet detail, which is a nice touch, and you got a nicely done hatches right here but other than that it's basic it looks good nonetheless alright now we're gonna take a look at the last piece of rolling stock the caboose as you can see it, it, like the hopper this caboose is of post-war origins from the looks of the tooling that is other than the style of the grab irons and handrails on the ends but other than that, you got nicely done 
rivet detail, which is a nice touch, and you got cast and grab irons on all of the corners, and you got some legible car data right here, as well as here, and right here it says, since 1848, pulling together, and right here you got a nice crisp Chicago Northwestern logo, just like on the hopper and on the tender of the engine, and you got a nicely done American flag right here. On the ends of the caboose, you got you got some nice detail, even though it's all cast in. Now, keep in mind again, basic is the key word here. And the walkways on uh, on the steps of the walkways is has safety tread on them, and also on the corners you got nicely done step detail, even though it's all cast in. And as you can see, the in the interior is actually eliminated and as you can see it's all it's all frosted so you don't see the wires and the light bulb on the roof of the caboose you can see there's quite a lot of detail you got nice step detail on the roof as well as on the top of the cupola here and you got a nicely done smokestack here which is a nice touch and in case you're wondering, yes, this this roof is removable. And if if the light bulb were to burn out for some reason, if you want to replace the light bulb in that case. And the best way I figured out how to do it was to grab it like this, give it a gentle pry on one end, and then grab it by the other end and give it a gentle pry, and the roof will just pop off like that. And as you can see, you got the the wires as well as the light bulb. And as you can see, the these are separate pieces. And in order to play, put the roof back on, these have to be hooked back on to the to the body of the caboose, like so. Just like that. Now here is a look at the underside of the caboose. And as you can see, it's really nicely detailed. And as you can see, there's some rivet detail on on the body of the caboose. And on this side, you got the air tank, which is a nice touch. And on the trucks, you got two pickup rollers, one per truck. That's for the to the, for the light bulb that would light up the interior. Alright, now before we get to BFIMO, I'm going to show you the, the remote that comes in the set. As you can see, it's basically the same style of remote as with all Lion Chief and Lion Chief Plus engines. And as you can see, each remote is coded to control a particular locomotive. In this case, this remote is coded to control only Chicago Northwestern, number 1155. And as you can see, the it's all pretty basic here. You got the button for the bell and the button for the crew talk and the button for the whistle and you got the throttle wheel here when you turn it clockwise it goes f the train goes forward if you turn it counterclockwise the train goes backwards and the further you turn it in either direction the faster the train will go and right here is the on off switch and on the back of the remote you got the the battery compartment and the the remote itself takes three AAA batteries and unfortunately Lionel does not supply batteries for it you'll have to supply your own alright the last thing we're gonna do before we start this train up is BFIMO best feature in my opinion well in my opinion it was kind of a toughie but then I decided that, that the best feature on this set is the 
the charm of the post-war era that this set has. With the engine and the tender and all the pieces of rolling stock, even though the truck side frames aren't from the post-war era, but that, to me, that doesn't matter. So yeah, best feature of this set is the post-war style charm. All right, now comes the fun part. Let's go ahead and fire this train up and turn on the remote. Turning on the remote is critical for these Lion Chief engines to run properly. Anyway, let's hear some of the sounds, starting with the whistle, which is activated by pressing the whistle button here. And then there's the bell, which is activated by pressing the bell button. And the button here in the middle is for the crew talk. It depends on how long the train has been standing still or how long the train's been moving. Dispatcher here. You are cleared outbound. Over. Thank you much. Cleared outbound. Out. Now when moving the train, it couldn't be easier. This right here is the throttle wheel. As you can see, it's, it's designed to look like one of the drive wheels on a steam engine. When you turn it... When you turn it clockwise, it goes forward. But when you But when you turn it counterclockwise, it goes backwards like this. And the further you turn it, the faster the the train will go. Train stand by for a few seconds. Dispatcher here. Please hold for track orders. Over. Roger. Let me know when I can hold. Out. All right. What I'm gonna do now is test the pulling power of this engine. Even though this engine has one, only one traction tire. So, so yeah, this is gonna be basically a strength test for this engine. With this engine only having one traction tire. Anyway, let's go ahead and head out. Dispatcher here. You are cleared outbound. Over. Thank you much. Cleared outbound. Out.
All right, that about wraps it up for this review video. As you could, as you saw, this set is absolutely gorgeous, it's, especially with it having some charm from the post-war period. And also, as you saw, this engine has some really excellent pulling power. I gotta tell you, with this only having one traction tire on the engine. And as you saw in the pieces of rolling stock, I had some some rolling stock from the post-war period. I had some, I also had some from the MPC period. Anyway, those cars look pretty good alongside this train. And like I said earlier, this set is available only at Menards. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm Toby Pasman, and I will see you next time.